All right, 2.7, implicit differentiation. Here's some homework examples for you. Here's number one. So if we did 1a, remember implicit means that we do not have to isolate for y first. That's really nice because in some of these, it's really ugly. Look at this, y over here, y over here. That's really ugly. How do we isolate for y? Just get it written explicitly in terms of x, almost impossible. So let's just take it as it is. We'll differentiate both sides, but we'll differentiate with respect to x, okay? So that's gonna mean a couple things. The derivative with respect to x of x is one, remember? The derivative with respect to x of y is dy dx. Or when we differentiate y with respect to x, it's just y prime. When we differentiate x with respect to x, it's one. So if we keep that straight, if we keep that straight, this is gonna be pretty easy. What we're doing is we're doing chain rule slash product rule and the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. So let's take a look at a. So I take a look at each of these terms. I'm going to differentiate them each individually. I'm going to leave them exactly where they are in the equation. This is an x term only. Do I need to zoom in for you guys? Can you see that? This is an x term only. So that means the derivative of, literally, the derivative here, d, dx of x squared is 2x. Done minus what's the derivative of y squared well we have to treat this as a foreign uh, 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 function it's not with respect to x this is not x this is y so i'm going to do chain rule i'm going to do chain rule and then what's the derivative of y well it's just y prime so it looks like this 2y to the 1 you don't have to write the 1 times the derivative of y i'm going to use uh, the prime notation there okay I'm going to use the prime notation. It's just cleaner, easier for me. So uh, everybody got with that? You okay with that? If it's not x, you have to do chain rule. Y you actually have to do chain rule with x too. You do, actually. What's the derivative of x? Well, it's 1. So we multiply by 1. So you're doing chain rule for everything. It just so happens that the, chain the derivative of x, the inside function, is 1. Okay? The derivative of 1 is 0. Questions about that first step? Okay, let's continue on. You see you have a derivative here, so ultimately what we're doing is we're trying to find dy dx, or y prime. That's what we're trying to find, so guess what? I see it right here. So I need to isolate y prime. And the derivative of y is going to be in terms of x and y. There's going to be x and y on the other side of the equation. So I'm going to do negative 2y, y prime equals negative 2x. I'm going to divide by negative 2y. What does this equal? y prime equals x over y. Questions? Okay, double check with the answer key there. This is correct, right? Okay, make sure you don't miss anything. Okay, let's take a look at C then. C, x, y equals 4. Sorry, what? The issue is Leibniz notation? Big yeah, deal. Yeah, whatever. dy, dx equals x over y. I'm only concerned about this, right? That's the big thing. Okay? Yeah. If you want to use Leibniz notation, I wouldn't suggest that you need to right now. You know, wait till university before they make you do that. That's fine. Um, whatever. Either way is good for right now. So this is a product, okay. So remember, the preferred variable is x, is with respect to x, so the derivative of x is one, the derivative of y is y prime. So product rule says the derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second, y prime. Derivative of a constant is zero. So that's your first step of implicit differentiation. Here we have a product, so we had to do a product. <coughs> Product rule. So I'm going to have um, y prime here. I'm going to combine a couple steps here. I'm going to subtract y from both sides and I'm going to divide by x. All right, here's e. So e has chain rule on this side and product rule over here. No problem. So we've got 3x squared. If you're going to do chain rule, you could multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which would be x, which is just 1. So that's just like all the stuff we've been doing. Here we have a y term. So to differentiate this with respect to x, I would do 
y squared times y prime times the derivative of y with respect to x is just y prime equals okay so now you what question okay you just started to say something okay so what we could do here is you could pull the x out or pull the sorry pull the six out and just focus on x y or you could treat the first term as six x which i think i that's what i usually do this first term is six x so the two factors here are six x and y so the derivative of the first is just six derivative of the first times the second plus the first factor which is six x times the derivative of the second so the wrinkle here with this one is is that we have y prime in two different spots so how do we isolate for y prime if they're in two different spots we got to get them on the same side and we have to factor the y prime out so let me show you how to do that now so let's take the y prime terms which are this one and this one put them on the same side so i'm going to go 3y squared y prime minus 6xy prime and i'm going to take this one and put it over on the other side of this one 6y minus 3x squared And again, why I did that, why, why I did that is because I have the y primes on the same side. This, the, the y primes are a common factor between this, you know, these two terms. So I can divide a y prime out and show it like this. y prime times what's left over, well, 3y squared minus 6x. Now we're getting really close, aren't we? To solving for y prime. So now I divide both sides by this 3y squared minus 6x. Those factors are now gone. Okay, so I have y equals this over here. Now I've got 3s and 6s all over the place here. You should be able to divide something out. But what we're going to do is going to factor the top and the bottom and simplify. So I'm going to take a 3 out of the top. It's going to be 2y minus x squared. And I'm going to take a 3 out of the bottom. y squared minus 2x. You can now see that those 3s go by common factor out. And we are left with this right here. So because there's two variables multiplied together here for this 6xy, we have to treat this as two separate functions, like an f and a g. Because this is a x function, this is a y function. So we, you, you can't treat this as one term because we've got an x and a y in there. We have to treat it as, a, as two separate factors. Yeah. So this only has one variable, so I can treat this as one single term, do chain rule. This has one, one variable only, treat it as a single term, do, do power rule. Okay, but this one here, because there's an x and a y multiplied together, not added, multiplied, I have to use the product rule here. Okay, uh, if we talk a little bit about some of these other questions, I won't, I won't necessarily do them all. Number two, find the slope of the tangent line to the curve at this given point. We differentiate, so find the derivative implicitly, and then you substitute x equals one into the derivative and y equals negative 1 into the derivative. So the slope of the tangent line, which you have to remember, is actually uh, the slope is defined by the x and the y value, not just the x value like all the other ones were up to this point. Mm -hmm. So if we're trying to find the derivative at this point, the value of the derivative at this point, I take the derivative of this function right here, this equation, which is 2x plus, um, plus 8y, y prime equals 0. Solve for y prime. Okay, so it's a 1, it's a 4. 
So we've got negative x over 4y, looks like. Now, this is what the derivative expression is. And here are the points. Here's the x value, and here's the y value. So if I want to find the slope or the value of the derivative at this point, I need to use either the x and or the y. In this case, I need to use both to find the, uh, okay? So y prime evaluated at the point 1, negative 1 would be negative 1 over 4 times y, which is negative 1. Looks like it should be one quarter. So the slope of the tangent line there is, and you can use whatever notation you want, I don't care. The slope is one quarter.